This week's fly is another soft tackle. This is called the Orange Fish Hawk. First ran across this from Ray Bergman's book, Just Fishing, in 1932, I think it was when it was published. It's an old pattern. It's been around for a long time. The original uh, was tied with a badgered ginger hen hackle. I don't have a badgered hackle uh, hen, so I'm using more of a speckled and on this one. But I like the orange fish hawk. It kind of reminds me of a cross between a wet fly and a soft tackle with the tag on the back here and then the body and the rib. Just an interesting fly. I have fished these before for panfish. They work very, very well. Eager to get out on the trout stream this, this year and uh, along with all these other soft tackles, give them a shot. But that's the orange fish hawk and we'll go ahead and get started. Start our orange fish hawk by placing our hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 3906B in a size 14. I like to use a little bit longer shanked hook. It's just personal preference. You can certainly use a regular 3906 or at 3399 if you want. I'll debarb the hook. I'm gonna attach my thread. I'm using two different threads for this because the body on this fly is going to be a, um, a rayon floss. Because it's a lighter color, I'm gonna start with a white this is a uni thread eight aught in white and that is just going to give me a lighter base so that the floss when i wrap it onto the body or i should say the shank of the hook doesn't end up getting darker i'm going to attach my thread behind the eye of the hook then i'm going to run it down to just to the point of the hook For the tag and the rib on this, I'm using a gold Mylar tinsel. This is a Danville Mylar tinsel in a size 16 and 18. It looks silver here, but when, when you apply it and it flips over, uh, it'll be gold on the other side. I'm gonna attach that to the hook shank, bringing it up underneath the thread, right on top of the hook shank a slight tension on my thread, I'm just going to pull that mylar to the left just so that this tag is the full length of the body. I'll put in two other wraps to secure that and then I'm going to put in the floss. Again, this is a Danville four strand rayon in an orange, it's kind of a, a golden orange. Even for this size hook, I'm going to use all four strands. If you want a little thinner body, just use three or maybe two. I'm going to bring that onto the up to the underside of the hook shank and wrap my thread on it and then start wrapping my thread forward. I want nice touching turns or as close as I can get because I just want to have a nice smooth underbody for this. Taking my floss, I'm going to, on this first wrap, I'm going to stroke the floss out, and that is to get all of the fibers under the same tension in the same direction. This will help to prevent the fibers from separating as I'm wrapping this up the hook shank. I wrap this in with just slightly uh, each wrap overlapping a little bit just to give me a nice consistent color and shape. put the tag on and the rib, I'm going to turn the hook over and you'll see that that silver mylar now flips over to 
the gold side. I'm going to get four wraps in going down the hook shank, just slightly over the bend, and then four wraps back up. To get those four wraps in, now I'll start the rib, which is five nice even spaced wraps. change over to my black thread. Again, I'm just using a, a Uni 80 in black. I'll attach right behind the eye of the hook, wrapping backwards, maybe about the length of uh, the eye or width of the eye of the hook. Not much, because I don't need a whole lot here. I don't need a large head on this fly, I just want to keep it rather small. So for the hackle on this, traditionally is it's a ginger badgered hen hackle. I don't have a badgered one, but I do have a nice gingered uh, neck here with a lot of kind of speckled, darker and lighter ginger. So that's what I'm going to use for this. I'm going to pick an appropriate feather. I want to figure out the length of the barbs on these and how, how long they're going to be and what I want for the fly. I generally like them to be a little bit longer than the bend of the hook. So I'll strip away the excess. I should have something like this. But I don't need all of this for my hackle collar, so I'm going to take my small hackle pliers and I'm going to grab the rachis of that feather and just separate not even that much. That's a little bit more than I need. Probably something, something about like that. A lot of your soft hackles aren't big bushy collars. They're, they tend to be a little sparser. Trimming away the tip, I'll leave myself a nice little anchor to tie the tip of that hackle in. I want to make certain that you get, oh, five to six wraps nice and, and snug on that so that that does not come out. Taking my hackle pliers, stroke these fibers back. Start polymering that around. This is a interesting point here. A lot of times when people are tying their flies, they want to just go through the process all at once. They don't want to unwrap and go back. As you can see, I had one small clump of barbs that were sticking out underneath the eye, which I probably could have swept back when I made the head and would have been fine. But take your time with it. If you want the fly to look real nice and to be a certain way, sometimes you may have to unwrap something and possibly even tie in another hackle if it's just not behaving the way you want. With that hackle secured, I'll fold back the rachis and starting at the eye of the hook, wrap backwards just to make a real small head on our orange fish hawk. Six turn whip finish. Drop the head 
cement on both sides of the head. I like to put it on the side of the head and the, and the primary reason is if you, for me at least, this is a uh, fly tight head cement, which is a thinner head cement. It's also alcohol based. If I come into the top and I put a drop of glue right on top of the thread wraps right here, rather than soaking in, it tends to run down into the eye of the hook. So I prefer to put it on the sides, on both sides here, simply because it will run down around the top and the bottom and into the sides of that collar and it'll set up better. I end up with less, less glue in the eye of the hook that I have to clear out later. Just a little tip there. So that's the orange fish hawk. As I mentioned, I found this to be an interesting fly because of the tag and the rib on this, which a lot of times, especially your soft tackles, you don't see tags and, and ribs on like this. I'm certain you could tie this in a yellow or a green or you know a, a red or something like that. And, You've got, you know, a variation of red fish hawk or a green fish hawk, whatever you want. And also, if you don't have, you know, a, a speckled hen or, I mean, a, a badgered hen or something like that, then just use whatever you got, whether it's a speckled hen, a cream, a sand, a tan or something like that. Just go ahead and tie it up. Give it a shot. Probably work just fine for you. I hope you enjoyed that. That's the orange fish hawk. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.